Okay, we're going to learn about turning fractions into decimals. Fractions and decimals really are the same numbers, they're just written differently, just like percents. We'll get to that one later. To turn a fraction into a decimal, you must get a denominator that ends in, I mean, a denominator to their 10, 100, 1,000, and so on. One with the zeros. So, we have to get a denominator over here of 10, 100, 1,000. This is very easy to turn into a 10. How will we do that? What could we possibly multiply times s to get 10? Well, if we multiply both of these numbers times 2, then we can get 4 tenths. The main rule you have to remember when working with fractions is that whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So if you're going to multiply the bottom times 2, you have to do the same with the top. So 2 fifths becomes 4 tenths. Now, another thing that you're going to need in order to be able to turn fractions into decimals is you're going to need to know your place value when it comes to decimals. So, let me do this over here real quick. This is a decimal point. Okay. Now, Everybody here is used to regular place values, ones, tens, hundreds. This is a decimal point. Anything on this side of the number is a whole number. Anything on the right side of the decimal point is part of a number. We don't start with ones, we actually start with tenths. So this section over here would be tenths, hundredths, and thousandths, ten thousandths, and so on. If this is 4 tenths, then we have to find the tenths section, which is right there. We stick a 4 in it. That's 4 tenths, which is written as 0 0.4. Okay. Okay, here we are for round 2. We're going to try another fraction now. Suppose I start out with 3 twentieths. We need to come up with a denominator of 10, 100, 1,000, and so on. Now, could I divide something into both of these so I can get a denominator of 10? Well, if I divide 20 by 2, I can get 10, but I can't divide 3 by 2. So I can't divide. I have to multiply. I have to go bigger. So, we want to find a denominator, obviously we're going bigger, we're going to try to get a denominator of 100. What can I multiply times 20 to get 100? Well, for those of you who are not very good with your multiplications yet, just count by 20s, you just hold up your fingers, count by 20s until you get to 100. See how many fingers you use. Got 20, 40, 60, 80, 80. I use five fingers, so that means I multiplied five times. So five times twenty is a hundred. What is five times three? Five times three is fifteen. Now we have fifteen hundredths. So if you say it properly, you should be able to figure out how to write it as decimal. Fifteen hundredths. Okay, this first place value after the decimal is tenths. This is hundredths. That means that the last number has to be written in there, which will come out to 0 0.15. Because that's tenths, that's hundredths, fifteen hundredths. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you one last technique. If you know how to do division, uh, like the long division style, there's another way to find. Uh, to, to transfer them into uh, decimals. So here we go. Let's say let's use the same one, three over twenty. All right. Using the division method, make the bracket, and basically, I would flip this over this way and put the three in here and the twenty here. Okay, because that's what really a fraction is. It's division. Uh, now we all know that we can't divide 20 into 3. So what you do is you put a decimal point and you add a zero. Okay. 
I know I'm going to end up having to add another zero there, but let's let's show it. how we do this. How many times, let's pretend for a minute that the decimal is not there. How many times can I get 20 out of 30? Once. So, 1 times 20 is 20. I get a remainder of 10. Well, I can still work with that. Let's stick another zero on the end, and we'll drop that zero. Now we're working with 100. How many times can I get 20 out of 100? five times, as we figured out before. We have to raise this decimal point right up there. And look at that, we got our 15 hundredths. Five times 20 is 100. And we get a remainder of zero. So once you get your, your remainder of zero, you've got your decimals. Pretty easy, huh? Okay, we're going to try another example. This time we're going to try 9 eighteenths. There's nothing I can divide or multiply with eighteen to get it to end with, a, you know, have a denominator of ten hundred. So what I need to do is I have to reduce this to its simplest terms first. So I think of what is the biggest factor that I can divide into both of these. Well, I know that I can divide 3 into both of them, but there's a bigger number. So let me see. 5 won't go into them. 6 goes into this, but not that. 7 doesn't go into either. 8, no. 9, 9 goes into 9. And 9 goes into 18. So I'm going to divide both, both of these by 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 18 divided by 9 is 2. So, if you weren't able to tell right off the bat that this was one half, there you have it, one half. So one half. Let's let's go ahead and try that division way. So we flip it over clockwise. The one ends up in here. The two on the outside. We have to stick a decimal and a zero. Let's bring this decimal up. I can't get two out of one. I can get two out of ten five times. Five times two is ten, and I get a remainder of zero. I'm done. So my decimal for one half is equal to zero point five. I hope that was easy. I hope this was helpful. Uh, my advice is to practice, practice, practice until you're a master.